reserve the right to get a lot of what I'm talking about in this video wrong. If you know that I'm wrong and you have uh, a source or evidence to back up your claim, then please post it in the comments section below so we can all learn more. If I find out later I've gotten something wrong, I'll also post it in the comments section. So if you're watching this video in the future, make sure you check out the comments. Hello, sewing people of the internet. Uh, today I am working on a messenger bag for me, finally. Uh, I've made a couple for some other people and I'm finally getting around to finishing my own. And uh, I'm going to be putting some PALS webbing on it, which a lot of you will probably know of as Molly webbing, and I'm going to talk about the difference in a minute. But I thought this would be a good time to talk about sewing Molly webbing on your project. I'm just going to keep calling this Molly webbing. There is a distinction. It's kind of correct to call it Molly, and it's kind of not. But uh, Molly webbing is commonly found on packs. Uh, this is my old DIY pack that I made about three years ago, and I use molly webbing to attach different pouches to the sides. And that allows me, especially as someone making my own gear, it allows me to make new pouches and try them out, and if I don't like them or if there's something wrong, I can take it off and make another one or fix it or whatever without having it permanently attached to the bag. Let's talk about what molly is. So there's a lot of misinformation about molly out there, and it's a term that kind of gets misused quite a bit. Uh, molly is a system uh, that was developed by the U.S. Army's Natick Labs to replace the ALICE pack system. Uh, and it refers to a system of backpacks and load-bearing vests and modular pouches. So molly is an acronym. It's M-O-L-L-E and typical uh, government forced acronym style. It's modular, lightweight, load carrying equipment. The system of webbing that's found on Molly equipment that allows you to interchange pouches, which is what we normally call Molly webbing casually, is actually called PALS webbing, and that stands for Pouch Attachment Ladder System. It's probably technically correct to refer to the webbing on your backpack as Molly webbing because it's compatible with Molly gear and is part of the overall system. But if you're being really accurate, it's probably more correct to refer to it as PALS webbing. Most of the information I have on Molly came from Wikipedia, and I'm not just going to repeat everything I read on Wikipedia for you. You might want to look it up yourself. I did a little bit of research for this video so I wouldn't look like a complete idiot. I found the patent application uh, from when the U.S. Army patented the Molly system. So this is what the abstract says, word for word. An interlocking attaching system for removably securing objects such as pets to a garment. It really says pets. Look it up. So let's take a look at how Molly works. I'm going to remove one of my pouches on my pack. I'll talk more about this attachment later. As you can see, it's easy to remove a pouch, and it's not that difficult to put them back on, but it does take a little more time. So, PALS webbing for a Molly system is one inch webbing sewn one inch apart and sewn with a vertical stitch line at one and a half inch increments. And you can make the conversion to metric, but this was developed in the USA, and so it was uh, developed with the Imperial system. So that's what I've done on this pack to make the spaces that you can weave the webbing from your molly pouch into. For the pouch itself, typically the webbing is arranged the same, one inch webbing and, and basically every other inch. But what you'll see frequently and what I tend to do is uh, just put the webbing um, one on top of the other with no space in between. And that gives you a little bit more uh, versatility in terms of where it's mounted. So to attach a modular pouch to your PALS webbing, if you're using an original style Molly pouch as designed by the US Army, like this one, you thread the tab through your piece of webbing and then back through the webbing on the back of the pouch itself and through the next piece of webbing back through the last webbing on the pouch and then finally it's retained by this snap. 
And now you can carry a grenade with you. I, I think I've put this on twice, it's pretty stiff. It's probably easier to do if it's broken in more. There are literally dozens of ways to attach Molly, uh, different proprietary systems and stuff. I'm unfamiliar with almost all of them. Really, the only thing I ever use is uh, the Molly sticks. I have no affiliation with them, but uh, I really like them. The way these work is you thread through your webbing on your pack and then into the second strap on my pouch here. And then similarly, you just thread through every other strap. And then when you get to the end, you wanna hook the stick over the top strap that's on the pouch. And then once it's hooked over the webbing, just snap it and it's locked on. So according to the source where I purchased my webbing from, and uh, you're probably going to ask in the comments section, and honestly I can't remember where I purchased this last batch from, it's available at a number of places. Uh, according to that source, the proper webbing currently to use for Molly is Milspec 17337 webbing, and that's this stuff here. and. You can get it in several colors. I have uh, foliage, black, and I think desert tan are the three that I have on me at the moment. If you can't find that webbing or have some other one inch webbing that you want to use, as long as it's reasonably thin, it'll probably be fine. I've used the wrong webbing for Molly and it functions fine. I do like 17337 though, it's very flexible. It's nice and thin and it's really strong, plenty strong uh, for this purpose and I use it for other purposes like backpack straps. So this is my current messenger bag project and on the sides of the bag I'm going to have three rows and two columns of PALS webbing so I can attach things like a water bottle holder or other pouches that I might want to use on the side of the bag. I've already attached the webbing on one side of the bag and I'll show you how I'll attach the webbing on the other side. Right now it's just stapled on, so I have it where I want it. I think that the bar tacks that separate the spaces in a piece of webbing to make PALS webbing should maybe be zigzagged. Uh, I think technically maybe you're supposed to sew down the webbing and then zigzag back up and down a couple times. And there's a certain number of stitches that's supposed to be to meet the technical specification or the military specification. I've yet to be able to find that information anywhere, and for my purposes, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna hold a cup of coffee on the side of my bag. Uh, if I were making a piece of gear that someone were gonna take into battle and gonna be relying on the stuff not to be separated from them, uh, then I would need to know that specification and make sure I adhered to it. Uh, so if you're making a serious piece of gear and, and for some reason are watching this video to learn how to do it, uh, just know that what I'm doing here is for tactical city boy molly stuff and not for uh, true battle rattle. So since I don't have zigzag on this machine, and I do have other machines that um, I do have zigzag capabilities, but I don't feel like dragging one out, so I'm just going to use this one. But uh, I'm just going to do some straight stitching back and forth with uh, a reasonably close stitch length. I don't have any idea how many stitches per inch, and I'm not going to count because, again, like I'm holding on a coffee cup holder. So. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I've gone ahead and marked with a pencil the lines where I'm sewing. Since I'm going to sew right over the pencil line, you won't be able to see it when I'm done. When I've finished with one piece of webbing, uh, rather than pull this out and cut the stitching, or cut the tail of the threads, uh, I'm just going to lift the foot, move up to the next piece of webbing, put the foot down, and start sewing again. And I'll do that each time just to save a little bit of time and trouble.
So there you have it. The PALS webbing, or MOLLE, is attached to the exterior fabric of this messenger bag. I did this this early in the process so that these stitches won't show up on the interior lining of the bag when it's finished. If you wanted to retrofit some PALS webbing onto an existing pack or a bag or whatever, uh, just know that if you sew this on, you're going to have this stitching showing through on the back. If that doesn't matter to you, then that's fine. Otherwise, you'll have to disassemble the bag to remove the lining if there is one. I just want to give one more quick caveat. I have never served in the military, uh, and I have nothing but mad respect for anyone who has. If anything I've said in this video sounded like I was being anything less than respectful, it was totally out of ignorance. Uh, nothing I've said was intended to be anything but the highest praise for the military. Uh, this piece of equipment came out of the military environment but is now pretty prevalent in civilian bags and cases because it's incredibly useful. So hats off to uh, the military people out there. Hey, do you want to see this bag when it's finished? Well, if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you'll see it when it gets done. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments section below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, it really helps. Thanks for watching.